Hello everybody. How are you all doing today? Hope you're having a great week so far. Let me know where you're from. It's always nice to see where everybody's coming from. It's a beautiful day here in New Zealand today. Lovely summer day. Just the way I like it. <laughs> Hi, Camlesh, Christine, Carolyn. How are you all doing? I am fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I'm going camping tomorrow, so it couldn't be better. <laughs> Hi, Liz, Marina, Treasure. Good to see you guys. So if this is your, your first class with me, just uh, to, in order to chat with, just log into your YouTube or your Gmail account. Then you're about to chat with. Ken, Ria, Catherine, Susan, Paula, how are you guys doing? That's fantastic, Ria. I'm glad to see you're good today. Sunny and cold is where such a contradiction of terms, eh, Susan? <laughs> At least then you can still sit inside close to the window and be, and be nice and warm. Oh, that's not good, Julie. Nice. Alrighty, so let me just go through a few things in case this is your first class. Um, the class is being recorded, so if you uh, have a phone call or something like that that you need to take, you can click the pause button and then when, you, when you're done you can press play and it'll continue from where you left off. Um, if you do want to jump back to live, you'll see there's little live text that's grayed out on the bottom. Um, next to the play button, click that, then you'll jump straight back to the live where we are at that point. Um, it is live, so I'm constantly checking the chat box. Please feel free to, to chat along and ask questions. We're a friendly bunch, and I love answering your questions. <laughs> um, if you do want to paint with, uh, the, li the link is below on anartlessons.com. If you're a patron over there, you can go and download the the template and the reference photo to in order to work with. Otherwise, um, I will put the um, the reference photo up on the screen. You can just sketch along from there. I think that's about it. Otherwise, in, uh, sit back, relax. Either you, you're welcome to paint along or you can just uh, sit, and, sit and watch. Doesn't make a difference. Um, the replay will be available on, on the channel afterwards, the unedited replay. It takes me about a day or so after the class to, to just edit it. And then I edit it out all the little, the little gaps and so on. And uh, sometimes I add a few extra goodies into the edited version. And that goes onto the website for the patrons as well. So, Well, nice to see you join us, Primrose. Glad it's your, your first class. Oh, BG, you just finished your bulldog. You must uh, please uh, post the drawing if you haven't already so that I can have a look. Um, Susan, I am working in acrylic today, but you're welcome to follow along in oils. In actual fact, I think this class you could actually even follow along in, in watercolor or gouache. All right, so we are on the hour, so I think let's let's uh, get going. I'll do an official welcome, and then we can then we can start. Hello, and thank you for joining me in the class today. Today we're painting a Venice canal scene. It's a pretty cool little photograph that I found on 
I think it was Pixabay. If it wasn't, it was on Unsplash. I'm not sure. Um, if you are a patron, you can go and uh, get the, the template and the photograph on the website. Um, I'm painting in acrylics, but you're welcome to follow along in oils. And I think even, even gouache or watercolor would work today because I want to do it in a little bit more of a a loose watercolor kind of style it is a lot of work so we will get cracking um, so you'll see in the in the prep i've given you a template for an 18 by 14 size canvas i personally am going to be working on a smaller size just that i can get the the job done sooner you'll use exactly the same tools and use exactly the same techniques as what i'm doing so let me show you what the what the reference looks like and then we'll take it from there So that's the, the, the photo there. Let me quickly just see if I can find out where I got the, the reference photo from Unsplash today. It's a really nice photograph. Lots of atmosphere in it with the, the earthy tones in it. So I'm really looking forward to painting this. Um, because there's a lot of work, the minute you've got um, buildings and stuff, it's a lot of work because you have to work accurate. We're going to take those background. You, you can see even in the photograph, I, I, sp I specifically chose this one because they are semi out of focus already. Just to force us to not add too much detail into those back ones. And then obviously here yeah, in front with the... With the gondola itself, we'll, we'll, we'll add the detail in there. But again, I think we'll also just simplify that a bit. And then you'll see on the left-hand side, there's that other dude and, and his gondola. Uh, I think we'll just completely leave that out because he doesn't add any value to the painting. Our focal point is the, is the, the gondola. And the guy is going down the canal. So that, that's what we're interested in painting today. So you'll see I have cropped the photo to get that around the, the third mark to get the, the balance and the composition right on that one. All right, so let's go over to here. So this is just a, this is my, my canvas. So this is a sheet of canvas that I'm painting on today. It's the acrylic paper. And what I've done is, this is just now a printout to the real size that I'm referencing from. So there's the, the outline template that's, that's inside your PDF. So all I've done is, um, you see I added a little bit of color in it just to add, so that you can easier spot the details. So all I've done is I've really just transferred the basic outlines even this building over here i've simplified a little bit i've just made him basically square that guy there square this here is going to become just one building maybe with a little bit of color in it but not too much um and then you've got these three big guys over here and they they what's going to take probably the most time today because we have all these little windows and things which we need to get in um and we need to get the perspective correct, otherwise they're not going to look good. So sadly, I know we really want to paint this, but I suspect that's probably going to take the most time. But it's okay, it doesn't matter. It's the end result that counts. So just transfer the basic outlines and, and then just where the windows are to, to, to give you an idea of that. And then obviously here. So here, what I've done, we've now left out that gondola, so I didn't bother drawing that. And then here I've simplified, I've left out, it looks like a, a, a mom, a dad, and, and a, their daughter, or their, it could be, a, could be their son as well, their child is sitting here on, on, on the gentleman's lap. So I've left her out as well, because I don't think you're able to, because you can't really see any details. Um, it didn't really add too much value. You can see there's people sitting in the chair, and then I've just add, drawn that straight down like that so that's what we're left with 
And as you can see, there's already, because there's quite a bit of drawing work done, that tells us we've got uh, a way to go. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, uh, I've taken the paper, and it's a little bit larger than the, than the actual painting. So I'm going to take some masking tape, and I'm going to mask it off to give me a nice border, a white space border around the painting. So at the end of the day, we can take the masking tape off, and it should give it a really nice clean edge and a nice effect. So if you're working on a standard canvas, that's fine. You can just use any old masking tape. Um, I'm, because I'm working on the acrylic paper today, it's it really rips easily. So the masking tape I'm using here is is a low tack masking tape, so that hopefully I can get it off without ripping the paper. <laughs> Famous last words, eh? So if it does rip, then I'll just uh, I'll have to paint the border to hide the rip. Alrighty, cool. So when I stick the masking tape, I try even just to stick it down as lightly as possible. I don't rub too hard over it. All I'm trying to do is just get this outside edge to to seal so that no uh, paint can go in underneath. Alrighty. Let's go and mix some colors. So we'll zip over to the palette over there and let's see. I think with this one we could probably just mix our colors as we go, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll put on some titanium white. And then we'll start at the back and we'll work our way forward to get the to get the overlapping right. So we always need white, so I'll put on a decent dollop of titanium white. And then it is like a bit of a sunset. So let's put on some cadmium yellow light. Not too much, just a speck. It should be plenty. That will probably be way too much. Alright, so I'll take some white, and just to look there, just that, that's enough, into there. We don't want it yellow, yellow. Remember, all your sky colors are always quite pastel. They're, they're, they're gentle colors. I always try and make them softer than what I what my brain's telling to mix, and then they look natural. Alright, now I'm going to take a, a soft full bit. So the one I've got here is a, it's roughly a centimeter, so what's that? Just less than half an inch in size. And I'm going to dip my brush inside the water like this. So I'm really watering that paint down. Like I say, we're going to do it almost in a bit of a watercolor type of style today. Get it really thin. And let's go to there. I think let me just see if I can crop this photograph. So that we don't have those white bars on the on the left and the right hand side. Yeah, that's better, right? Eh? Alrighty. So it's just a, a, a basic little laying down the colour there. So keep the paint nice and wet. Let's see, let's pop the... 
It's popped the pallet down as well, eh? Yeah, I'll we'll chuck him over there. So I'm going to go carefully around these edges. It's a light colour, so it's okay if you do go into the buildings, but it's better to not. Because the paint's nice and thin, I'm just really quickly scrubbing it in. So if you want to, you can get fancy and go a little bit more orange towards the top. I'm going to leave it like that today. I think that's fine. Because we're not really seeing too high up in the sky. So I'll just leave it at that. Alright, so moving on. This guy over here is like a grey building. So let's see how we're going to get a grey. Maybe a bit of Payne's grey. Let's get a bit of Payne's grey going there. And it's got a little bit of colour to it. So I think I'll put down some burnt sienna as well because I can see that in the, in the building next to it anyway. So we'll be, be proactive and put that down there. Yeah, I think between those colours we should be all right. So let's give that brush brush a wash, and then I'm just going to bring a bit of this. Payne's grey down there. And it can mix with it yellow, it doesn't matter. Probably still a little bit dark, so let's get some white into that. What we're looking for, what I'm looking for now, is that underneath grey that you see in the building. The light grey. You see the building's got sort of texture to it, eh? So we want to get some of that texture going there. So let's take that. Yeah, why not? A bit of this burnt sienna into that. Do you want to have a quick close-up of that colour before we before we start painting? I'll just go to there. You see it's not a it's not an intense colour. It's still quite quite white and light. I'll get lots of water into that as well. So I'm going to go over all of this right up to the edge of the building. Because it's a light colour, all that drawing work is still showing through. So we're not losing any of those outlines and things yet. I'm quite happy with that. And now our sun is coming from the back in this painting, which is quite unusual. Eh? We usually choose our, our, our sun to come from sort of over our shoulder. But this one is not. So we've got these buildings over here. Their highlight side is the right hand side. Because for them, the sun is coming from the right to the left. These buildings over here, with our sun being around here, their highlight side is going to be on the left. Because for them, there the sun is coming from the left to the right. So let's get this side over here darker. And that will show us that, that angle where the one is lighter and the other one is darker. So I'll just work some more of this. Paints grey, 
and maybe even just a touch more of the the burnt scene in there as well. Why not? Just make sure I get a a fair amount of contrast there. Yeah, that's fine. So we will still darken it with the with the texture that we're adding. So I'll just run that all the way down there. Make sure I get these edges nice and nice and sharp. So now this color is a bit darker, so I'm just double checking that I'm not losing my these little outlines that I initially drew. So far they seem okay. They're still shining through, so I'm happy with that. Quickly scrubbing that in. So here, here we need to make sure that, that that edge is nice and sharp. So now this is one place where you have to be careful. Because on the photograph, these lines are not vertical. Because of the angle that the, that the camera was held, they add a bit of an angle themselves. So what you need to do is compensate for that. By just painting these guys upright. Just paint them vertical. Otherwise your buildings are going to look odd. Alright, that should be that should be good for there. We'll leave that to to dry. That building over there seems roughly the same kind of colors. So I'll just pop some white in there to get a, a lighter version. And the lighter version goes around here. So I'm using the, the full bit. If this full bit is now too, too small for your painting, then just go over to a, a larger brush. And if it's too big, go to a bigger brush. I just like using the full bit because it gets me into little angles and things by turning the, the brush one way and then it gets me into nice broad shadings by turning the brush flat the next minute. So I sort of can do two birds with one stone without having to change my brush. Right, so it's back to this darker guy over here for this half. So that we can get that angle in those buildings over there. Like that. Let's take a look. This guy over here is roughly the same color. It's got a little bit more burnt sienna in it. So let's just take what we've got over there. Work a touch more burnt sienna into it. See, just little tiny impromptu mixes because that's all we need. We don't need a lot of paint, so it's not worth mixing them up as like individual piles on the canvas because that's all we needed. Less than a speck. Alrighty, next one. Let's take a look. That's got quite a bit more burnt sienna in it, eh? So there seems to be two buildings, two or three buildings there, but I think we'll just... I, I, I don't know the place. Maybe you do. If you do, then obviously you'd work a little bit more accurate and add those three buildings in there. That's why out in the distance for me it doesn't add any value because I don't physically know this, this place. I haven't been there yet. So I'll just add 
Let's see. Let's put burnt, this burnt sienna mix over here on this side, and then we'll put a little bit of a lighter mix over there just to have some extra detail. Keep enough water in the paint because we want to we want this paint to just flow off the brush. You you don't want to be having to aim and scrub and all that kind of thing. Just whack it in. Think of this as like color washes. Alright, so we got that. And let's do a bit of a, yeah, what the heck, we'll do a bit of a yellowy one there. We've got the colors on the palette, so it's not an issue. So I'll just wash the brush. And let's take some of this yellow that we used for the sky. And some of this orangey brown that we used for the, for the building next to it. Maybe just a touch more yellow in it. Touch more burnt sienna. So we get it more like a like an orangey kind of color. Yeah, what the heck, that should do the trick. I suppose you could even use some uh, yellow ochre there if you wanted to. That, that would do the trick too. Yellow ochre with some white in it. Okay, so you'll see this. there's a, a pole standing inside the water over there. There's quite a few of them. I think that's where they 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 were the the gondolas onto. I'm going to paint straight over that. I can still see where it is, so that's all good. Okay, that's fine there. I think while we while we busy there, we may as well finish them. So I'll take a bit more burnt sienna into that wall color. That'll give me the terracotta roof color. Let's get some water into that so it can flow nicely. And then we'll just zip these these roofs in quickly. That one there has this side, which is pointing towards the sun, and then there's that little other side next to it which is pointing away from the sun so I'll just take a little bit more burnt sienna into that just to get a bit of a a contrast between the two neat over there. Alright, so let's go over to the fine liner. And let's add some of those windows and things in. So that's out into the distance. So look carefully and you're going to see that the color is not as um, dark as, for example, the windows here in the foreground. Let's zoom in and you can see what I mean. Can you see these windows in the foreground? The inside of them, they're quite dark, eh? Now let's go to those windows in the background. Can you see there? They're, they're a lot more subtle. And that's just simply because you've got um, atmospheric perspective happening. There we go. So I'm going to just take dip my, my brush in the water. We've got this grayish kind of color and we'll darken him up with some more of the Payne's gray into it. So you can see that that's way far from black, eh? And that gives you that, that should give us that nice washed out effect. Let's give him a test drive and take a look and see what he see what he looks like, see if he's dark enough. So we can't really see any details. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's probably even still a little bit too dark. Gee, let's work a bit more. 
of that grey colour into it. So we can't see any details there. Let's check it now and see what it looks like. Yeah, it's better, eh? Cool. So I'm just going to add suggestions of the main features. And that's the kind of thing that you would do even if you were painting in plain air. If you're on holiday and you wanted to paint the scene, you were standing there. You're just going to, in those things, the guys that are in, way out into the distance, you're just going to suggest the details as quickly as you can. Okay, let's see. Here, we've got those windows there are a bit more brownie, so I'll, I'll, I'll stick to that. Here's some windows over here as well. Then we can maybe make it a little bit darker, eh? Seeing as we've got they're against the darker background. Darken that up, that's fine. And then we've got a little bit of a what would you call it? Like a ridge over here. Where the different floors meet, they've added a bit of a, a bit of a fancy ridge to the building, an edging. So it's quite far out. There is a little bit of a difference in 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 angle for the perspective, but it's very little. And we are seeing these buildings roughly at at eye height as well. So that also flattens that that angle out. So we'll just pop those guys in there like that. Those actually more like this, eh? Smaller windows over there. So I'll just gently lift out as much of that there as what I can. It's way out in the distance, I'm not too worried. Okay, let's pick up a little bit of more of this brownie. Let's be used for that wall over there. And let's use that for those windows over there. Just very quick little suggestions. Okay, let's go back to the black. Well, this darker version is not quite a black, it's a grey, hey? Let's add a, a few suggestions of windows in around this vicinity. Again, I'm not worrying about getting anything too correct. This is not really a place where you're looking when, you, when you're looking at the painting. You're not really looking at these guys because you're looking at the gondola. So we just need suggestions of details here, enough to tell you that they're buildings. Your, your brain will fill in the rest of the details for you. Is that that in there? I think this, this almost looks like it could be a, a little bit of a deck or a, a restaurant or a, or a something. You know, with a that's got the canvas sides. Possibly something like that. So we'll just do that over there. Let's take some brown. We just do that kind of a thing here and there as well. In other words, just a few little variations of color and so on. 
That's fine. Okay, so the guy next to him, he's quite light. So I'm not going to use too dark a, a gray there. Well, this kind of a, a light version over there. Let's just pop those guys in. Just suggest a few windows there. I do see one or two little white kind of details here and there. There seems to be a bit of white around there. There seems to be a bit of white around there. There and there. And then there's some white in this vicinity around there. Yeah, that's probably that's probably as much detail as what we need for for way out in the in the distance over there. Right, so this here is nice and dry, so let's um block in the guy next to him. Then he can also get a chance to dry. Let's do that. So that guy is let's go to on there, right? Eh? He seems to be pretty much the same as that other building in the distance, if I look at his light side. So we can start off just by using that same color. So that was White, burnt sienna, and a bit of yellow, eh? Something like that. All right, so let's get this side here blocked in. Correct that line that's a bit skew on the photo get that as as vertical as what you can estimate it same on this side Seems to be roughly straight. So now that the edges have done, now it goes quick to just whack in this color here. And if it's not perfect or smooth, don't worry about it. We've got textures and stuff in this building that we need to add. So if it's not smooth, yeah, that's fine. It just means you've got, you've got some free textures already. Okay, and on the other side, being in shadow, he's darker. So I'm going to add more burnt sienna into the mix. And I think I'll add a bit of... Put more yellow as well, just to keep him on that orangey side. Don't want it to become too brown. And then, can you see it's got like those dull patches as well? We'll add those dull patches in afterwards. As texture. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure the color that I've mixed now has got enough contrast between this and that. So that we get that that angle difference. So the way I do these straight lines is take a look at what I'm using. I'm, first of all, I'm just using my hand, my fingers like that. So I keep my hand itself nice and still. And I'll do just little bits at a time. I'll do that as far as my fingers can, can stretch. 
and then I'll stop and move my hand down and con then I'll continue again and that's how you you get nice straight lines like that and the most important part is that your hand must be flat on the table Your fingers have fine muscles in them, so they're able to do fine detail. Or small little movements and stuff. But your, your arm doesn't. Your arm has got big chunky muscles in it. Right, so there seems to be sort of grey, but there is splashes of brown in it, so what the heck, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill it in. That's why you use your fingers and not your whole arm. Right, so this paint now is a darker than than the rest. So it's going to make these windows disappear. If I had to paint over them, I won't be able to see those lines of mine anymore. So here I am going to just be a bit more careful and outline them. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can still adjust, but at least I, I, I've got a fair idea of where these windows and, and, and this sign is in the end of the day. And the same goes for these pillars. Just leave yourself some indication of where it is. Keep dipping your brush inside the water to make sure that your paint doesn't dry on you. If it's a hot day by you, also don't don't be shy. Spray your spray your canvas. Oh, not the canvas, the palette. Sorry, spray your palette with uh, with a mist of water. What I use is this. I use just a a little spray bottle like this. I got it from the from the dollar store. It works great. It gives a nice fine mist. So every now and again I'll just mist the palette. And I know my paints don't dry out to me and I can paint the whole day like that. Alright, so that's cool. So can you see how you've got a good contrast between the left and the right hand side? Alright, so for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mix the colours for these two buildings this one and that one and then i'll take that palette away so that we can see the whole the whole scene maybe what i can also do is i can move the like i'll move the camera up because we, we're done now with those guys on the in the distance on the right hand side so let's see Let's just go to that camera for a minute and then I can uh, readjust the other one. Let's see, if I put it down like that, then actually we can leave everything on the screen. Cool. Alright, so can you see, like this building over here, it's got some texture to it. It's old and weathered. So we're going to do the same, just to keep it looking interesting. 
if you're really in a hurry then you can leave it flat that's fine then just add your window details in but yeah we've got we've got time so so i'm going to take just versions of the colors that we've got just modify them so now this time i'm going to just use a, a fine round so it's a larger fine round than then the fine liner let me get the fine liner so you can you can compare the sizes if you don't have something like this you can also just use a, a bristle brush that, that will also do the trick let me find one yeah just a small bristle brush like this would also do the trick same thing anything you can just make dabs and dashes with random dabs and dashes all right so all i'm going to do is just take whatever i've got over here and give it a bit more contrast than what i originally did so let's maybe try that for the for the sun side so this here doesn't have too much texture but generally what that texture is from is as the water is maybe gathered here by this uh, this water spout over here maybe it's leaked it's it's old and maybe it's a bit rusty or whatever or like here's little windowsills the water collects and then it runs down and then some algae grows and so on so those are the kind of things that we that we're doing now adding in some of that kind of that kind of texture and to do it i'm just going to use rabs dabs and dashes so just keep playing playing and playing until i can see i've got a little bit of a texture or a contrast over there can you see that so just fiddle with the color just darkening and lightening him up and now i'm going to just dab and tap literally dab and tap start there where i can see water would would gather like underneath these windowsills over here like that and then I'm just going to dab and tap it down as though that water was running down there and leaving a mark, a dirty mark on the wall as it ran down. And that's fine, that's enough. Not too much over there, we don't want to make that one too dark. Okay, the same thing over here. Yeah, we could even add a few lighter dabs and taps as well. So now I have to look really quite carefully to see where these lines of mine are. From the from the windows. Can you see how quick it goes? Really quick little dabs and taps. Let's get a few darker guys in there as well. little too dark yeah there we go that's a nice little a nice little color there very quick little taps okay so there's a window so i'll put something underneath it run him down there's a window so i'll get some dirtiness underneath there run him down and there seem to be i'm also just looking on the photo to get a feel for where these where these dirty marks are here on this edge for some reason seems to be a dirtier maybe there's a water spout or something running down there some gutter work yeah I think that's enough he's rough enough all right we're on a roll so we may as well just continue hey eh? let's do this <laughs> do this guy over here 
So if I take a look at him, he's got white patches around here. And then there's darker bits up over there. So let's take, this is the wall color itself. I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray into that. Just to dull that color down. Let's drag some of that in over here. Keep your paint nice and wet. Lots and lots of water in it. There seems to be a bit of a step between those two buildings over there. So I'll give myself a bit of a found line there. Tabs and tabs to get this nice and rough. Okay, and then it lightens up towards the bottom. So I'll wash the brush. Let's just grab some neat white. So I'll just nick some over there. Put some water into it. And let's see, where are these little white marks around here? So I'll just put some of those marks down, wipe the excess paint off the brush, and then just move that around. These marks must be really rough and random. There's a bit of random white over there as well. And there are there. Tiny amounts of paint on the brush, really small amounts of paint. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, let's wash the brush and do the other wall. Then we're done with all that texture. It's not taking too long, eh? So, so far, so good. I think our time is going to come when we're doing the windows, because that's where the, the fine work is concerned. All right, so I'm just adding gradually some more and more paints gray into that, until I see it's roughly that darker wall color. So working acrylic, I know it's going to still darken up a little bit more on me as it dries. And now I'm going to keep the brush quite flat. So that it's almost like a bit of a, a dry brushing effect that's going on to this. Get those undersides of the windows. The paint running down there. That's a little sign that. But water would also gather there and run down a little bit. Just a few dabs and dashes. Really rough. Really rough. And then as we get to the bottom section. He's, uh, he's lightening up again. So let's get some white into the burnt sienna. Touch of yellow. Just to get that lighter color. Roughly what we had over there. More or less. Without matching it. Let's get a few little lighter marks in over here as well. Okay, that's cool. There's just one little place that I went over the line, so I'm going to just lift that guy out to keep that, the, the two sides, nice and sharp. All right. 
Alrighty, so now we've got to do all that detail work. So maybe while we while we're doing that, let's block in this guy here on the left hand side. Then he can dry while we're doing that detail work. And that way we save ourselves a just a little bit of time. All right, so let's see is grey. So I'm gonna we've got greys here, so I'll just use this. Lots of water in it. Just so we we're uh, off white. Very very light glaze. And let's block all of this in. So just this front, the front side. And as with the other ones, he's also got quite a bit of texture on him, so if it doesn't have to be a perfect glaze or anything like that. Think of it as an underpainting that we're adding here now. Um, Shane is saying you, you put your fingers close to the bristles so you have more control of the brush. If I yes, if I'm doing detail work, I'm, I'm going to work here because then I've got it, it's just like you're using a pen. You've got fine motor control over it. When you when you're holding the brush way back, that's when you're also standing further back and you, you're holding your arm out um, outstretched, and then you're getting more loose. Um, kind of brush strokes that you're putting down but at the moment we're doing detail work sadly <laughs> so we have to we have to hold the brush close to the bristles and close to the tip okay so that, that's that all blocked in let's get these the palette and stuff back on the other side So you can either use just a, a bit larger fine liner than you used before. I'm going to use a a small full bit because he allows me to do also just flatter areas, but also fine details for these windows as well. Because like here, they they flat and small little lines, and there they are larger areas. So I can quickly get these guys in so let's get a bit of bit of dark so you can see over there they're not too too dark yet so make sure that there's enough white in them to gray them down let's try that color and see how it goes yeah that's fine he looks all right all right so it's really important that you get these these lines in the right places in in the sense of their angle can you see there to get your perspective right so the the way it works is your perspective is going to be as you're looking up at it it's at quite an angle 
as it comes down to eye level, it gradually levels out like that. Until at eye level, your lines are horizontal. So you can see that there is it more of an angle than these guys over here. So let's put them in. And then the top and the bottom of the window got to stop at that correct angle so that the tops form that perspective line and so do the bottoms. So the top's angle is not necessarily going to be the same as the bottom's angle. And now here at the bottom, this is more at eye level. So these lines are going to be flatter, more horizontal. as a result all right we've got that and let's see now we've got a few little other marks and things on this wall we've got let's give that wash brush a wash seems to be some there's the edge of the um the tiles from the roof that we can see over there so let's pop that in so we'll do all that work so that by the time we're done here, then we then we're finished with this side of the of the wall. We can move on. We don't have to come back to it. There's what something running down there for whatever reason. We don't know what it is. So we'll just quickly whack it in. What I like about it is it, because it's got that brownie colour. It just gives us a little something extra, something different, something interesting to. To look at around here seems to be like maybe a bit of a balcony or something that's that's peeping out over there so let's maybe just sort of suggest that it comes down to there and now we can also just now that we've got a, a fine little brush in hand strengthen some of these little dirty marks and things as well I'll just pop it down in like a bit of a squiggly motion. I don't know what that is. We can't see what it is. It doesn't matter. So there again, these little things coming down, I've got to follow that, that angle. Let's get something a bit darker. There's a something over here. Don't know what it is. Maybe it's a light. Who knows? Maybe it's just a mark. <laughs> and here, here's also a little something going on there. And that seems to be like a bit of a, a brownie black. So can you see I'm just whacking colors together to get something similar to what I see on the photo? Let's maybe just move that across there. Sorry about that. You couldn't see that. There we go. So I'm just suggesting details because you can't see what it is. I'm just suggesting them just to have some stuff happening there on that wall. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So he's now got that lovely big window there. Not quite black, hey? Not quite black. It's dark, but it's not quite black. So I'm going to add a little bit of, make sure there's still a little bit of white inside that color. Let's put him in. So I've mostly lost that line. So I'll just guesstimate him in. So now this is interesting. Because of your perspective. Let me get two brushes. So that I can show you some angles. Let's get that one and that one. Here, our perspective lines were running like this, eh? Like that. On the other side of the building... Those perspective lines are going to run a little bit down. So those lines run down towards a vanishing point. And the vanishing point is always on the horizon. 
I do have a lesson on here and on the website about vanishing points. But that's essentially what they're going to do. Let's hold the brushes like that. That's how your angles are going to change. So here they're going down and down. Here they're going horizontal at eye level. And below eye level, they're going to start going back up again. So go and take a look at that, that tutorial as well if you're not too in tune with how perspective works. So I'm going to let these guys go ever so slightly down. It all depends how much they go down. It depends on the angle of that wall in relation to you. If it's just a flat wall, in other words, you're looking at it face on, then these angles aren't going to be... You're gonna have, they're not going to be so extreme. Okay, so that should do the trick on that guy. Here on floor level, there's a, there's a, seems like a door or something. And I'm seeing just a touch of brown in that, so I'm making sure there's a, just a little bit of burnt sienna inside this black. So that it's a, a brownie black. That door is around that vicinity there. So I haven't got my lines anymore, so I'm just guesstimating them in. Because I don't know the scene personally, I'm not too worried if it's a little bit off. Okay, so this is at eye level, so these lines are going to go pretty much horizontal. Not up and down like they were over there. Here's two funny little marks. One seems to be around that vicinity. Another one seems to be around that vicinity. Not sure what it is, but we'll put them in because, yeah, we spotted them. Alrighty, so above this door, here's a bit of, a bit of a facade happening over there. Like an arch that they've added in. So I'm just using little dabs and dashes to create the impression of that. Never going to get the detail in there, and I don't even want to. Just uh, just the impression. That's good enough. Like that. Okay, let's get that window in over there. There's a little bit of a bit of brickwork above that as well, but we can't see it. So that there is more of a yellowy color. So I'm going to take some yellow and some white. Make sure we've got a lighter color than, than what's there. So that it's almost more like a door than a window, eh? <laughs> it's quite big. Let's, let's estimate that in. Yeah, it's probably somewhere around there. Okay, so... Can you see that line over there at the top? He's going up. He can't go up because of perspective. We know he's got to come down towards the, the horizon line to get the perspective right. So I need to just adjust that. You see the minute I do, it looks correct. So you've got to look out for those little things. And that's why I say these little detail works on buildings always takes ages because you've got to get these things right. All right, so it's a little bit darker here. And that dark is because this here is recessed. So it's casting a little bit of a shadow. That recess over there. 
Let's get some even darker and let's get that little bit of a brickwork suggested over there. And let's see what else have we got. Yeah, some nice little dirty marks running down there. Quite like that. That adds all these things that we're adding now, this just adds texture. Makes it look interesting. That there is a little probably a little bit too harsh, so we'll tone that down just by adding more texture around it. It was just a little bit too spotty dotty, eh? And that happens when you try and do it too quickly. So we'll just keep adding more around it like that. Let's see, there seems to be also a bit of a bit of brickwork over there, if I look carefully. So I'll really roughly suggest that. Without putting in too much effort. There are one or two lighter places as well. So let's take that lighter color that we used for the door. Let's add some of these lighter lighter guys in. There you can see that brickwork. So I'm just going to add some little lines like that. A few lighter little bits over here. Lighter bits over there. And it's a bit lighter in this vicinity. So let's add a bit more white, that yellowy white kind of color over there. Just really rough taps. And there's a funny little guy running over there. Wonder what those little things are, eh? If you know what those little things are there at those funny angles, let me know. I couldn't even hazard a guess what it is. And then there must be a spout running all the way down there. So let's get some darker color there. Again, lots of water all the time. Lots of water in your in your paint. Let's see if that's dark enough. Yeah, it seems to be. So we'll run that down there like that. And I'm not trying to get it perfect. In actual fact, I'm purposefully squiggling a little bit. There's another little thing running down there. Just adds detail or impressions of detail. Uh, yeah, I think that's all for that one. Let's move on to the, the next guy. So let's just get that palette out the way there. Yeah, there is a, a similar painting like this in oils um, of Portofino Harbour. There was quite a bit of detail work in that one, eh, Murray? All right, let's take a look. Just one little detail I've spotted over here on that one. There's just a little bit of a lighter line underneath there. And over there, let's just pop that in. Okay, so now it's back to the dark. So as we're coming forward, these windows and things are getting gradually darker and darker. With Portofino Harbour, the buildings were the the buildings were further away. So there, we really had to do some fine detail work. So here, I, I, I was, I, I don't know if I was clever or not. I think I was. 
<laughs> I didn't sketch in. Can you see these like little shutters on the each side of the window? I didn't sketch in those shutters. I just sketched in the actual window itself. That way it gives you a bit more leeway when you're adding in the, the actual shutter to just whack in a line next to each window. And it gives you one less detail that you need to work around because you can now just estimate those shutters in. As opposed to having three little blocks over there that you have to now carefully go and fill in. So hopefully that saved a little bit of time. And so again, I'm working according to perspective. Those guys run to the vanishing point, so they're all going to stop roughly at the same point. That guy goes over there, so they got to end roughly at the same point like that. To get that perspective right. Let's see over here, we have a door as well. He ends above those little, I don't know what to call those things, bollards or whatever they are where you tie a boat onto. There's a little a white pillar. I think that's all mayb maybe just a, a pillar from the from the sidewalk. Maybe it's a light or just a fanciness. Being white, I don't want to go too dark over it, so I'll leave that gap over there for myself. This is on eye level, so that can go roughly, mostly horizontal. Slightly down to get the perspective right. There's a nice big window over here. So I can't really see my lines anymore. I'm just guesstimating them. Here's a nice, a nice one. It's quite close to that, so that must be around this vicinity. Like that, and another window next to it. And he seems to come down. To roughly that that height over over there. And then there's another window upstairs over there somewhere. So again line has got to, to meet up. Okay, that should be fine. Let's leave that to dry before we start adding white marks and all those kind of things around it. Let's continue to the other side. Otherwise, those white marks are going to pick up these wet paints around it. Window, get him in. So I'm constantly dipping my brush in the water and then mixing it back into the paint. I 
No one there. I think that's actually a pole. I don't think that's a door or anything, so I'm going to leave him. There is ever some grey in that vicinity there. On the wall. So let's get a, a bit of a lighter grey going again over here. Something like this. Make sure there's physically white paint in it. Otherwise it's not going to lighten that up. I think that what's happened over there is there's some plaster that's popped off the wall. I think that's what's happened there. Here though, it's definitely been painted. Looks like that window goes down a bit further. Yeah, so it goes to around there and then it becomes white. Okay, let's extend this window down. We've now seen he's not quite where he needs to be yet. That should be fine. That sign is still nice and white. I haven't accidentally gone over it or anything. So we'll leave him at that. We'll add his detail in afterwards. I think this here should be dry now. Yeah, he's dry. Cool. Let's go over to just some neat white. So I'll just pick up some white, pop it down here. And then just put some neat, some clean water down there. That I can mix him with, but just enough to get this paint to flow off the brush. Don't, don't mix him down to the consistency of a water like we have so far. Otherwise, that uh, white will become too transparent. And now you can use, I, I'm going to stick with this small little um, full bit that I've got, but you can go over to a fine liner as well. It would work great over here. So here's little flower boxes. Look at that. I think it's a balcony and then there's, there's maybe some uh, flower boxes on the balustrading. Do you also hold your breath when you do the, the fine work like this? <laughs> I mean, so you find yourself totally out of breath. So Marais saying that these buildings are sinking a little bit every day. I was thinking, I was, I was wondering about that. As I was prepping for the class, I thought, how do these, how do these buildings survive being under the water or, or right on the water the whole day, every day, 24-7? I mean, surely the, the, the brickwork and stuff must pack up eventually because the, the water is going to soak in there. That always tickled my fancy. Oh, there's a little bit of grey. Same as what we had over there. There's a bit of grey work over there as well. So let's just get some of that grey. So grey has got white in it, so I don't need to wash the brush. I'll just go straight into the grey. Let's put some of that grey down there. Yeah, that's cool. May as well run all the way down there, eh? Okay, back to the white. So I did wash the brush now. I 
So I think that's the only white I'm seeing over there. There's just a little bit of a light. I'm going to run that down there. Just to show us that's a depth on that recess over there. Because that little edge over there is pointing towards the light. I know we can't really see it, but anyway. We'll do that just to complete the illusion. All right, let's add these shutters in. So let's introduce a new color now. Let's take maybe a little bit of ultramarine. Let's put down a tiny amount for now. So we'll take some of this, the black, we get some of the, we'll take some of the, <laughs> let me try that without hiccuping. <laughs> we'll take some black, some blue, tiny touch of white, just so we can see the color. But it'll still be quite dark. Yeah, that's cool. You see, it's got that little bit of a, a bluey tinge to it. Get some water in there so that it can flow nicely off the brush. And let's put in these little these little shutters. So I think I'll try one first off here on the on the dark side just to see what that colour looks like. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks great. The important thing is that you can see there's a difference between the the window and the shutter. So I think what we will probably do is just darken up these, the windows as well at places, just to really bring out that contrast. Here it needs to be slightly lighter, so I'm going to bring in a little bit more white into that. Because these shutters are now pointing towards the sunlight, so they they physically brighter appear brighter. Okay, there, this window. So not all these windows have a shutter. Those are the ones they maybe have something, eh? So I'll put a thin little line down there, why not? This window is a shutter. Turn them down there. This little door here seems to have a little bit of a, a lighter, lighter area. Maybe you can see, maybe it's like a door that you can walk into. It's an open door. So we're seeing a bit of the inside of that building or something. So I'll just take a lighter, seems to be brownish, lighter version. Put it down there and I'll just very quickly fade him in like that. And that should give us a bit of a, a looking in effect. So I've put down a little bit of dark this side, a little bit of light that side, and just quickly faded them into each other. All right, so let's grab some neat black, the paint's gray. Let's strengthen this. Just have to make sure that we can really see that there's shutters on either side of those windows. Especially over here. By giving it that second coat, it's really going to strengthen that color. Look at that lovely looking in effect we've got there now. Yeah, there's like a funny cage thingy over there. I don't know if there's maybe a power box or something that they that they're just keeping people away from, you know, as a as a safety feature or something. I'm going to leave that out. That's ugly. I don't think we need that. And here are some windows on this side that we must. So that one over there. Let's get him in. Thin little line. This one here we can see a bit more. We can actually see the shutter. So I'm going to not use the, the 
paint color. I'm going to use the shutter color. Follow him along there to get my perspective line. Maybe just a skinny little line there. Just to suggest the start of the window that you can see. Why not? <laughs> Alright, let's take a look. Let's go back to the white. So wash the brush. Let's add some these white lintels in on this guy. Now you can see what I mean when I, when I said we've got quite a bit of detail work to do. So that lintel doesn't go across to the um, to the shutters. It's just by the window. Yeah, I think that's good over there. I'm seeing a little bit of a, same as what we did over there, added that little bit of a depth into the into the window. Here's a little bit of a recess there as well. There, and while we add it, we may as well add it to this one. Yeah, this one over here, there's actually a darker recess. But we've now gone ahead and darkened up the window itself. So let's just do that. We'll lighten him up too. Alrighty, so there we want to suggest there's a bit of writing on that sign. So I'm going to take just a very low contrast gray and just use a few little dabs and squiggles just in, say, three lines over there. And that'll suggest that there's writing on side that. inside that sign hi Bikram welcome okay now we've got quite a bit of um, the, the plants and stuff over there so for now I think we'll leave those plants let's give this a, a, a fair chance to dry let's continue with the with the building on the left So let's move all those guys up and the reference. All right, so let's start with those inside bits. Let's get that nice dark in there. And that'll get us instantly looking into that building because there's like a little bit of a pathway there. So let's take a look. What colors have we got? It starts off really dark over here. So I think I'll go straight off for a paint's grey. In that area over here. And then as we come down, we're gradually seeing a bit more and more colour into that wall. And that colour seems to be A bit more like yellow ochre -y. But I'm going to try and not use yellow ochre. We've got enough other colors here to, to give us a yellow ochre-ish type of color. So I'm going to just take some burnt sienna, work some yellow into it, and look at that. Ta-da! Yellow ochre sorted. So that saves us having to use an extra color. So we can take that. Let's get some more burnt sienna and more paints grey into that to get a, a dark version over here and that'll be the start of this little shading of ours so that goes to over there I can see there's a door there on that edge I'm not going to bother with that
we'll, we'll run this color all the way down the pillar just gradually lightening it up as we move down so I know it's like right on the edge but I'm going to just stick with that I'm not going to adjust the camera for this tiny amount because you're going to see me do it over there again as well so just bear with me on this little piece so as I move it down I'm going to gradually pick up some of this lighter color put that down there and I put down usually the colors just next to each other I'm not blending them yet this way I know that this color I'm putting down is a nice and vibrant bright color and then I'll come back and I'll blend these two guys into each other until that line has now disappeared and then you get a nice solid shading so it's actually gone from black let me go to the wider view just for the second of here so we've actually gone from a black to a brown to that yellow ochre kind of color over there just by fading these colors into each other all right so let's start off with just a tiny touch of black over here so when you do work with this make sure you've got enough um, water inside the paint and if you're working with oils enough medium in the paint so that it can flow off the brush that's the way you're going to not accidentally go over the lines because you you know just not having to apply any pressure to the brush it's the the paint's just flowing off it it's easy for you to work accurate the minute you having to press hard that's when you accidentally go over the lines and stuff like that I see. this here is obviously not as dark as there it's it's also fading lighter as we come out like this because here there's more sun and as we go that way there's less sun quickly moving along can you see how thin the paint is it's almost like a it's almost like a watercolor consistency coming down and there that's where that that other gentleman was so he's become a ghost <laughs> do that and now let's start getting some white into that mix Maybe even a touch more yellow. So we've got that kind of a shading happening there. And that gives us a lovely contrast again from the top through to the bottom. And that accentuates that there's sunlight on the outside. which is now reaching this wall over here at the bottom but as it moves up towards the the top as we look up towards the top on the roof the roof is now essentially casting a shadow so we can't see that light anymore okay let's work these colors into each other to get a nice little shading happening over there like that that's great so the next one is quite dark again it seems like there's maybe a bit of trellis work or something um, CD is asking where am I based I'm in New Zealand my friend so it's quite dark and it's quite brown as well so I just take burnt sienna and paints grey into each other And we can pretty much block all three of those guys in there with that for now. So 
just want to make sure I've got enough water in that so that it can flow off the brush. Because this is now really fine work. We don't want to go over. This gentleman over here. So he's now operating the gondola. He's not quite a sailor, is he? What would you call him? A driver? If you know, let me know. That's an interesting question. So I'm working in as careful as I can, and I'm making sure that I, I do an invisible line down there past his arm and down here like that. Vertically. Oh, take, taking that one a bit far. That's all right. Hopefully I'll be able to lift it. So let's quickly try and lift that little excess that I've gone over now before it gets too dry. Not quite, eh? I'll just cover him up a little a little bit now with some grey and then we'll sort it out with some texture afterwards. Luckily with painting there's not much we could we could fix. Oh there we go, there's a it's a, the most obvious name, it's a gondolier. <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs> Who would have guessed it's a gondolier? Operating the gondola. I would think it's a very highly respected job there because it's such a tradition to it. It's been done for, for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's sort of like an honor, it must be an honor being a gondolier. So I'm literally holding my breath here to get these these lines nice and straight because it's quite fine. Don't be shy to go over to a, a the smallest little fine liner that you've got to get this detail right. Okay, again, I'm drawing myself an imaginary line past his arm all the way up there, so that what is going on behind the arm um, continues seamlessly on the other side of the arm. All right, I'm going to leave that a few seconds to dry. While that's busy, let's start adding some nice texture into, into the wall. So we'll just use another version of grey, same as what we've been doing over there. Just a contrasting version of grey. We'll start adding some, some detail work in here. There seems to be some, some other ornate work. Maybe there's like some relief sculpture-y kind of stuff at the top there. So we can pop that in. Yeah, we've got this. It's not a solid, it's sort of just using dabs and taps. 
think, you know what, I'm going to go over to a, a fine liner for that. So we can get almost like a little bit of a, a dotty effect. Because that's not smooth, it's got like little ridges and a pattern in it. So just to show that um, that pattern, we use that. And then underneath and on above that, again, there's, there's some lines. I'm sure visiting this Grand Canal must be a, definitely be a grand place. I would love to visit there. I'm going to take a ride in one of these gondolas. It's sort of one of those things that you kind of have to do, eh? Yeah, if you take a look on, on the reference photo, here in this little top corner, let's go to that. I'll show you what I mean. You can see that little... Um, fine detail that I'm that I'm talking about that pattern that's inside that it's not just a line can you see there it's got those little ridges and stuff in it so it's it's maybe it's a, a like a rope pattern or something like that so that's why I'm using this like a dotty motion So here I'm going to use specific little wiggles and squiggles because we can see that pattern here. But then as we go along, um, perspective starts doing its thing and we can see less and less detail. So as I go along, I'm gradually just going to turn that, those little bows and squiggles that I did, just into little taps. And that'll suggest the rest of the detail. Because your eye can see those little squiggles, it'll tell you, ah, all those squiggles run all the way along there. Here, this is really small. So again, I'm just going to, as I do that little circle there, I'm just going to wiggle my hand. So that it's not a perfect circle. It's a little bit of a, a wiggly circle that'll suggest details here we can't see any of that so just a few little dabs and taps is enough to suggest the detail that we've got over there all the way around here just little dabs and taps and a bit of wiggles and squiggles in the hand will give us that detail So I'm judging it as as best I can around that edge there. Okay, and there we've got some edging. Okay, let's do these arches and get them done. So they also go quick little shading from dark through to light can we start with dark over here so I think I'll put that down and I'm going to use two brushes keep the one with the paint the dark paint on it the other one I'm going to have just a wet bristle but it's not sopping wet I've dipped it in the water, just wipe the excess off, and we're going to try and just fade that lighter using water to get a shading there. So we'll just add as much 
water and as much paint as we need to get that shading over there. It's really warm yet today by me, so it's not the paint is drying too quickly on me. I'm gonna have to do it in a in a standard shading, unfortunately. So as I bring it down, I'll just gradually add some more some more white into it. Let's maybe steal some of that that yellow yellowishness that we have over there. So I'm still using the two brushes. That's where I don't have to wash it. Get the dark in. lighter one in and then just work them into each other just like that all right this pillar here is a bit of a different color if you look at that detail work there that's it does taken a little bit of time but it looks quite nice eh? So this has got just a bit of burnt sienna in it. So we can put that in with color washes. Well, this here is quite dirty now, so I'm gonna maybe start a new pile. We can have some nice fresh, fresh colors again. really light for here let's just zoom out and see what's happening with the rest of the wall because obviously at that height there's going to be similar colors so let's get all that in in the one go so that runs down along there and in this vicinity here and there's there's more white Hey, I can see the the end of the tunnel as far as all this fine detail work is concerned, so that's great. I'm happy about that. Yeah, that's cool there. And then we'll just add some more burnt sienna into that. And just a touch of the Payne's Grey to take away the brightness because this is now actually a shadow side of the pillar right so we can't have it brighter than that side otherwise it's going to look like there's more sun on that side so just by adding that bit of uh, Payne's gray in there it just takes away that sunny feeling Yeah, that should be fine. Steal a little bit of that for that little dark underneath there. Let's see, here's a touch of detail work around there as well. So I'll suggest that. And there we go, that booboo -boo that I made is nearly gone. <laughs> Luckily, there's nothing we can't fix okay so i'm going to take a a bit of yellowish into white and just block that in over there so that is no lighter 
Yeah, that's fine. What's next, that little pillar over there? So let's get a bit of grey. Run it all the way down that shadow edge. Quite watery. I'm going to just clean the brush. Just take all the excess paint off it by wiping it on my on my cloth. And now we should be able to just spread that little bit of paint that's there across. Unfortunately, my paint is now really drying quickly on me today. So I'll have to add an intermediate color there. So we'll just blend that intermediate into the shadow color. And that should give us that rounding that we need. And that's fine. I'm happy with that. Suggest the rounding over there too. On that little foot of the pillar. And over here. That half over there is darker than that side. So we'll do that. And run that dark down there. Just like that. Awesome. I think let's just stand back. We've now really been zoomed in for a long, 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 long time. <laughs> so let's do that. We can at least see where we're at and what have we done so far in the last two hours. It's quite crazy that all that fine detail takes so long, hey? But anyway... The rest should go reasonably reasonably quick, famous last words. So there we've got a bit of bit of ground over there. So that let's take say some Yeah, maybe a bit of sap green. Put down some sap green. We've got yellow and we've got some lovely browns. So between all of that, we should be able to tackle that. So I'll take water, water this down quite a bit. And then we put the picture. I'll pop him down in the corner and I'll, I'll just zoom well in just so that you can get a feel for what I'm seeing or what I'm doing. So yeah, this whole other uh, dude of these gondolas missing. So we'll add some greens in here where he was. And then here's some ornate work on this other the gondola that we're painting. So I'll add mostly green in front of that as well. And there's some greens over there. So I'm not sure if this is a little bit of a, a grassy walkway or if it's just like moss and stuff. My guess would be it's just like Moss and goodies. Right, so you, you basically know what I'm painting. You've seen it up close. So I'll just run that all the way along here in the places that I see it. Just quick little color washes and things. That's going to help us get this the edge. Was water's edge sorted over here? So we've got that, and then a really dark brown. So I'm not even going to bother 
cleaning the brush or anything. That little bit of green that's on there, so what? So that dark is here on this edge. And as it, I, I edge it off, let's go a little bit closer for a few minutes. As I edge it off, I'm just going to, so you don't have a sharp edge, just going to use a, a few little random rough taps. So it's going to be roughly straight here by the water itself, because the water always meets pretty straight. But then that moss or whatever and, and the ground meet in, in an organic or inorganic shape. Really rough and random. Like that. Let's see, there are a few little places up here where there are darker bits as well. This is again something that you're not really going to be looking at. When you're looking at the painting, you're not concentrating on this. So we can really just whack in a bunch of stuff quite randomly. There I'm seeing some of yellow ochre kind of colors. So I'm just going to pick some of that up. And I'm going to whack them in really, really rough. I don't want to spend too much time on this bit here. S simply because I know nobody's going to really look there. Let's see, around here. There's almost like a little, like you can't call it a jetty, but just a little platform that's, that seems to be sticking out over there. So Just got a little blob of water there, so just soak him up, he doesn't belong there. So let's pop him in, that's his shadow. Then we'll just use some white. Without, without washing the brush, so that little bit of black that's still on there will discolor and form a grey. And we pop that down over there. Maybe we see it, maybe we don't. There's another grey over there. And then there's some white in this vicinity over here. So let's just pop that down. Yeah, and I think, you know what, that's probably enough detail is what we want. Here's maybe just a little line over there. That's all I can see. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's zoom way out on everything. And I think let's start popping in this water. So I'll go all the way back to my, my larger full bit brush again. So basically what we're seeing in the water is a mixture of the water color and the, the colors around that are reflecting in the water. So let's start with this side. We'll walk, work our way to there. So here we've got quite a bit of that um, sky color. That's reflecting there. We don't really have any of that left yet, so I'm going to mix up 
up again. That was just white with uh, a bit of cadmium yellow light in it. So I'm going to get a fair amount of water down there. I want this paint to really flow off the brush now. So just bear with me as I put in this first color because it's so light you're not really going to see the technique. As we get to the next colors, I'll show you exactly the technique that I'm doing. So just bear with me here. I need to get this first, this first one down. Just to get us started. So I'm, I'm mostly just using a color wash at this stage. Let's maybe get this a little bit oranger as we move down. So I'll grab a little bit more. Bit of burnt sienna kind of color. And that will orange up that yellow in this bottom area here. And that will suggest the sky that's above us over here above there is is oranger as you would expect with the sunset so that's now as good as just a straight up blocking that in with that that yellowy kind of color we used up top there Let's do that, eh? Then we can see. All right, so the next color, I'm going to just take some of these grays over here. Okay, lots of water in the mix. And now I can start showing you the technique that I use. So I'm going to adjust this one camera for us. Then I can zoom in on that. Yeah, let's go to there. So I'm going to take some of this grey. Now, what happens is you have these little ripples. You have these little ripples on the water. Now, because of perspective, you see them really large over here. And then they become smaller and smaller and smaller as we go along there. So they're way out in the distance. You can even use a smaller brush. And we'll start by adding just small little marks in this area over here. Now, let me see if I can show you what happens to those um, to those ripples as you go further away let's go here when you're close you can see the gaps between the ripples like that as you go further away now what i want you to do is look at the gaps between my fingers can you see it looks, I'm keeping my hand, everything at the same angle, but it looks like those gaps are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You see that? Until right up close, you can see the gaps in between. 
So the same thing is happening over there. So way at the back, you're seeing really small waves really close together. So I'm going to basically do this really, really close together. Little wiggles and squiggles. You can even just use little dabs and taps as well. And that's showing you all those tiny little ripples. Here there's a bit of a gap, so that's great. So now we use these little dabs and taps to show us those little tiny ripples on the water. Can you see that? Very gentle dabs and taps. And that's going to suggest all that detail for us. Here, now we're gradually coming forward. So now we're going to start adding a bit more distinct ripples. Being a little bit more bold. With the paint so you can see over here i added myself that little bit of a an edge to show where the um where the actual dark ends because that dark is a is a reflection of the building so technically i didn't need to put it in because it's gonna your your reflections come straight down but i put it in anyway just to remind myself, because as you as you do these little ripples, you tend to get carried away, and then you you float them a little bit too far to the left, to the right. And the same over here. I gave myself just an, an idea of where the the ripples are for the for the boat. The, the reflections. Okay, so can you see this little squiggly motion that I'm using? And now as you do this, I'm not just um, making the, the ripples themselves bigger as I'm coming forward. I'm gradually making the gaps between the ripples larger. Just as I showed you earlier using my hand. So now I'm going over to a larger brush. So now I'm starting to have, have larger movement of the brush. And larger gaps between these ripples. Okay, let's zoom out so we can see the whole picture and then we can, we can continue. So some of these ripples here on... on the transition point between the light and the and the darker bits as that water ripples it ripples this way and it reflects what's over there when it goes like this then it reflects what's on this side it goes this way it reflects what's over there so you've got over here bits that are 
pointing more or less towards the different objects. So some of these ripples over here are reflecting that. Some of these ripples over here are reflecting that or that. Okay, so Paula's asking a great question. That is, if we're painting on a canvas, should we first do some sort of whitewash so we don't have bare canvas showing between the ripples? No, not at all. No, not at all, Paula. I'll tell you why. As we continue here, we, uh, we're going to have all sorts of different colors, and some of those colors are going to be white. So that's fine. You don't mind if there's little bits of canvas shining through. So here you can see, maybe there's also another building over here, just outside of you. That's also a possibility that's starting to reflect over here. So I'm going to add just some little wiggles and squiggles. Maybe I'll use a smaller brush for that over there. Just to show that this, this water is moving, and that's why you're getting those different... Um, little transitions and things. Make sure there's some some goodies going out out of the picture over here. But the majority are going to end in that vicinity, and that's fine. Then, then you're happy. Okay, so let's go ahead and add more over here. Be more brave. Add more wiggles and squiggles. So all of that is reflecting over here. And here we're starting to see some of this building's reflection. So we need to leave some space there. And here this boat is reflecting. So we need to leave some gaps for that. Here we're starting to see through the water. So we're starting to get some um, water color visible. But I'm going to add some of this all over the show. does now add some it's starting to cover more and more of the canvas for us and that's why I say don't bother doing any kind of a, a wash or a glaze or anything like that beforehand it's, it's not necessary yeah I, I did I suppose you can say I did a bit of a glaze over there hey because it was just if you look on the photo it's essentially one flat color so that's why I did it over there and now we're just adding even then it's not solid if you if you look very carefully you can see that there are little patches of white canvas still shining through there okay let's go to a, another color so washing both these brushes so quite a few of these ripples over here are pretty much those building colors over there so I'm going to organize myself some of that type of a color. And we'll add some of them in over here. So what I like to do when I'm adding these waves is I'll add some of them over previous ones then they sort of look like they're flowing one into the other. up gradually smaller and smaller lighter and lighter and even less and less paint on your brush so that you're getting less and less detail super thin lines here at the back can even add some more water onto my brush to make sure it's almost just like color washes in this vicinity around here You don't want too much detail there. Okay, 
Okay, now we'll take some of that because it's now also reflecting. Maybe you've got that bit of a, some of this is pointing that way and reflecting some of that. So we're going to get some of this inside here as well. So that goes there. I think that should be enough over there. So let's take a look. We've got some of these guys reflecting over here. From these other buildings over there. Go right up against the boat and go also out of the picture places. So here I'm looking at probably that um, pillar over there that's reflecting this color. So I'll take that and I'm going to put more of these ripples running down here like that. To show that reflection. Okay, that should be enough of that color. Let's go to the next one. I think I'm going to take paint some uh, paints gray and a bit of just a bit of sap green into that and that should give us this greeny water color the color of the water <laughs> water color that'd be confusing eh let's take that and let's add some of these guys let's put some smaller ones way up here Yeah, it's not a, not a bad color. So there we've got that um, pillar um, reflecting over there. So we've got to leave that gap there for him. So you also find right up against the object. Here where the reflection starts, it's quite accurate. But as we come closer, that water is, you're seeing bigger ripples. So it, it goes broader and it goes a lot more staggered. So there you'd have like that and now uh, here this it's going to be more broken up. So we can come because we're closer we can have some more of these guys. Here we've got also quite a bit of watercolor reflecting or shining through the reflections. So I'm going to add quite a bit of water-colored reflections in this vicinity. Because that's going to help us get that, the reflection of the actual boat with the gondola. Some over here, gradually less and less. And then some coming into the picture always to have continuity. Okay, and over here we're also starting to have some of the boat itself, which is black. So let's pick up some paint of grey. Start adding some of these darker reflections in. So I'm not trying to not fully cover all the all the canvas. I'm leaving myself a few little places for for lighter bits as well.
as you can see there's some lovely sunlight happening around here too because that reflection of the boat is going to end sort of like this like a mirror image like that so we've got that Okay, I just want to get a few little grey guys in that vicinity there. Let's add a few little greener guys in this vicinity over here as well. There's, there's some pillars and stuff. Let's put those pillars in and we can reflect them. So for those pillars, I'll block them in, let's say with a, just with a black for now. Just to get them established. They pass the water's edge into the water to show you that they, they're ending over there, inside the water. is further away so he's got to be a little bit smaller and end a little bit higher These guys are closer, so I'm making them broader. To show that they're larger. Alright, so we'll give them a few seconds to dry. And while they do, let's just add a little bit of brown into that mix. And let's add some reflections over here. Remember, sharp against the object. And then gradually larger, broader, and further apart. So that that reflection just gradually disappears on you. Like that. That one way at the back is quite washed out. So I'll even just use just a little bit of a, a grey. It won't be too too obvious. Alrighty, let's see. Yeah, let's take some of these greys over here while we're still waiting for those pillars to dry. Just something like... Yeah, just something similar to what we've got in that colour over there, in that vicinity. And let's just work in some of these ripples around this, this area over here as well. So I'm going to go slightly over the boat. All right, let's get some of these uh, burnt sienna kind of colours again from, from that over there I think we can strengthen that up those guys a little bit 
in that vicinity over there. Just like that. And now let me just pop the I'll pop the palette down over there. Now I've just taken some yellow. I've taken some white. In other words, I'm mixing some of the sky color, but I'm making it stronger. Some stronger yellows. And just here and there. I'm going to add some of them in as well. In the in the brighter kind of areas. And over here, here we've got the sun is hitting the, the edge of the boat and then reflecting down. Almost give it a bit of a, almost a bit of a, a color wash in that area over there. Okay, here I'm adding just a few little extra stronger yellows over here as well. Just in this front bit. Not, not as we go up, just to indicate that that um, the sunset is, is warmer towards the top. Okay, now let's just get a few little darker colors in there as well. So let's take some Payne's Grey, like that. Not quite as dark as the boat colors. Just a few more little contrasts around here. Maybe there's little bits of, as the as the water ripples, little bits of the the water color that's shining through. I think that's fine. All right, let's take that and add a bit of burnt sienna into that. So it's like a very yellowy burnt sienna color. I mean, let's get that that reflection in over there. And that reflects a little bit past the boat. Now I'm going to take neat white. So that neat white is going to indicate the actual sun itself. That's also reflecting here and there. So add them in as individual distinct ripples. So often I'll use little areas that are light already. As my guide of where to put little sun sun strike ripples in. Let's get some further back as well. Especially in this area over here, I'm seeing quite a bit. Because here the water's calm. No, it's not calm. It's, it's more ripples there means more more wind. So we'll just do that to get it a little bit more spotty and dotty over there. Awesome. Okay. Our poles should be all nice and dry now, so I'm just going to take like a, a bit of a greyish kind of colour.
and are essentially be highlighting them. So you need to now remember where the sun comes from. The sun is coming from for each pole, not necessarily from the same direction. For that guy over there, the sun is maybe coming from the left to the right. But for the rest of them, it's coming from the right to the left. So I just use a grey. And then as I come in, gradually add a little bit more brownish colour to it. So that it appears as though you can see more colour detail in these guys. And that's your colour perspective. So you not have not only have distance perspective, you also have colour perspective. Let's see what else do we need to do before we start that gondola. A little bit of a little bit of plants there in in this area, hey. So let's take some sap green. And I'm just going to guesstimate where these plants are. There's some over there, there's some over here. Some over here. Because when I didn't actually paint the... Um, that little veranda piece on each one in. So we're just going to estimate it as, it as though it goes out a little bit more towards the right hand side. Here's yeah, some purple stuff, but I'm assuming there's plants. It's, it's flowers. Same with this one. There's not really... There's some flowers, so I'm assuming there's going to be some greenery with that flower. Now there's a flower box over there. So I'm going to put that in. This one also seems to have sort of a bit of a flower boxy effect over there. So you can see I'm just doing all these things really, really quick. Those are purple flowers. So what do we need to do to create a purple? We've got blue there already. Let's maybe use a bit of... I've got permanent alizarin here. Pop that down and that should give us, with yellow, should give us a red. For the red flowers, get a bit of white in there just so that they hopefully stand out nicely. So I've got a few little dots over there, a few neat crimson dots. I'm doing this really quick and rough because it's not details that we we're looking at as well it's just it's there in the background and maybe you didn't even notice it was there until i mentioned that these these guys were there right eh? let's take some red let's wash the brush because that's now got yellow on it so let's take some of the blue and some crimson into it and that should give us the violet that we need for there and then a little bit of white as well just so we can see it better yeah that's in there like that and that one there seems to have more there's some reds so yeah, I think I'm even going to just without washing the brush, create a different red. So they're not all the same. So there's a little pot standing over there. There's some flowers over there. And then I'm seeing some yellows as well.
Maybe it's highlights for the for the greenery. Maybe it's yellow flowers. I'm not sure. But we'll put it pop it in anyway, and that's that. Okay, let's see. That guy over there is white. And he'll have a little bit of a shadow running down there. That should be fine. Then next to that there we had a white little pillar over there. And there was another one on that edge over there like that. There's another pole that we missed. Well, I missed mine. I don't know if you missed yours. There's another pole over there. That should, should be it. Okay, let's start painting this uh, gondola. So I'll start off with some neat uh, Payne's Grey. Because all this over here is in shadow, so it's neat black. Make sure you get yourself a nice flowing edge over there, like that. Same over here. So add just enough water into the paint so that it flows off the brush. But not so much that it becomes transparent. Okay, I'm going to leave that little gap over there, so I don't know where the two, the two halves meet. Let's continue down here. So don't worry about those little metal shiny strips. We'll paint those in separately. So let's take a look. This guy comes to around here, and as he starts curling around, it starts pointing more and more towards the light. So A is getting lighter, and B, we're starting to see reflections. So technically here on this side we can also see reflections, but because it's all in shadow, they're not that obvious. So generally we don't really paint them too much. There you can see there's a bit. And it's almost like a bit of greeniness from the from the water that's reflecting in there over there. So I'll do that. I'll just estimate that colour. Get a bit of sap green in there. You can see really rough little impromptu mixes. And I'm going to get it right in on that edge. Like that. And just really quickly work it away. It doesn't have to be a perfect shading or anything, because remember it's a, it is a reflection. You do just want that edge over there to be sharp because it's uh, you've got an angle change from the one side of the boat to the other. All right, so as we come around here, I'm going to gradually break up that color that I'm painting because we want to show those reflections, right? So I'm going to take this black. Bring that along there. And I'm going to start just, I uh, uh, see there's an angle. Those angles are doing this. And then they're gradually flattening out a little bit. And it's becoming lighter towards that end over there. So I'll take the same color and just gradually lighten it. So 
So initially with more like a graze. Little stripey effect there like that. And then with gradually lighter and lighter versions. Maybe even a bit more burnt sienna into that. To show us that orangey sky kind of color. And as I do, I'm gradually filling up all these little gaps in the paint or in the canvas on the boat. So that by the time I'm done, this whole surface of the boat is filled in. And I've got the texture and the, tec the um, look that I want. So that's all happened now at the essentially at the same time. So there it's really bright so I'm leaving that open okay so I'm just checking that I haven't got any more the white of the canvas shining through over there anymore it seems good there's still a little bit of a line That's great. Okay, now let's get that lovely, really light color over there. So it's white, tiny touch of uh, burnt sienna in it. Maybe even a bit of yellow. smaller brush and just add little ripple reflections like that so you can think of it as you're doing a shading along that length of the of the boat using dabs and dashes little stripes Okay, let's get a little bit more orangey one here and there. And a few little oranger dabs and dashes. Not too many. We don't want to kill that that light color over there. It must look light. And that color must roughly reflect that color so that those reflections that we put in over there make sense. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to add uh, just a few little extra little highlights here and a few little extra reflection highlights over there. And then eventually go straight neat white. Add one or two little white dabs and dashes in here and over there as reflections as well. Alrighty, now you can go over to a rigger brush or any anything that's fine. Let's block that in over there. So this curls up a little bit. So those two edges over there are dark, but then as it curls upwards, it gradually starts catching the light. So I'm adding white and yellow into the paint's grey. To get that. 
and now I'll take my rigger brush and just run a little because it's a it's two two halves to it, right? So I'm just gonna run a little thin line there, and that'll indicate those two little um, halves, this half and that half over there. There seems to be a second line over there, so we'll suggest him. Then we have this over here, which is... Oh, there's a little bit of water we forgot. All black, but it's, it's pointing away from the light, so we're going to put that in solid black. So this is where that the little, I'm assuming it's a little girl, where that little girl was sitting. I've taken her out. You're welcome to put it in if you want. So I'm just leaving myself little gaps as suggestions for the, for where the gold must go. There's another little lighter thing over there. Some other black object that's catching sunlight. So that's the the Payne's grey with the yellow in it. It's over there. Here's a bit of a, a wood arm railing, armrest or something like that. Maybe it's just something that look, to look fancy. So burnt sienna. Paints grey, white, just to form a really dull, a dull brown. And let's block all that in really quickly. You can see there's some gold work on this as well, and that's all fine. Just block it in really quickly. And then over here as well. Well, we've got the same color on the brush. We may as well block that in. That's where his all rests on, by the looks of it. Okay, let's go back to black. Let's add these seats in. So things are coming together quite quickly now. We're definitely in the home stretch. But because we're in the home stretch, you have to still keep being careful that you don't. Now's the time when you're going to start wanting to rush stuff. And, and you can't rush stuff now. Because this is still detail work. This whole painting has been pretty much detail work, eh? So I suppose I could have just painted over this little ore, but I think I'm going to just go next to it. I am slightly painting over it. It's not perfect, but it, at least I'm not going to lose it completely. Because the colors that are going into that ore are light colors. And this is black that I'm working with here. So if you... Um, If you go all this black covering up that ore, then you're going to battle to get light over it. And have that light look nice and nice and bright. Okay, so that has now had a time to... 
settle in and just harden up a bit. So there's that little dark edge over there. There's a little snake running along there. There's a dark edge there. It's details that I can't particularly see. So I'm just guesstimating them in. And that will be good enough. In the end of the day. All those little um, suggested details will merge together to look like real details. <laughs> there's that. This little goody is that. There's his bit over this on the opposite side. So we can put that in over there. Let's put his highlight in as well on that top edge. There's some gold. All right, so let's get some of this. Um, no, before we put that ornate work in, I think we better just finish up some of this, um, these reflections and stuff that we've got over there. So I'm just going to really quickly suggest some of these, some of these reflections. And I'm just going to do it with whatever colors I'm seeing around there. Just so that they, there's continuity there. Very quickly, very rough. Because you're never going to look at that little area, right? You're looking at the gondola. Uh, Kamnish is asking, can we use black with white to get gray if we don't have Payne's gray? Yes. And then what you do, Payne's gray has a blue bias to it. So add just a touch of blue, like a, a French ultramarine or a Taylor blue, any darker, darkish blue. Add a little bit of in there and that will just push that, that black that you've got towards the, towards the blue side. And then you A for a wave. Hey, let's see. There's a bit of a, a detail over there. So just add that in. What else? We've got that gentleman's head that's riding in the in the gondola. And he's, it actually seems quite brown, so I'm going to just use the browns that I've got <laughs> already on the palette. So you're now not going to paint really people detail here. Let's just take some um, burnt sienna and some white and a touch of yellow and that'll, that'll give us a, a skin tone. There, there's a little bit of arm visible over there. And then he's got a, a blue shirt, so I'll take some ultramarine and some white. Mix up some form of a blue. Let's pop his shirt in over there. I think. Yeah, why not? I'm going to use a, just sneak a little bit, a little bit of cerulean down there. I just want his blue to be, of his shirt to be a little bit different than the other blues around in the painting. Just to differentiate. Okay, let's take a bit of white. 
and let's just highlight that just to show that it's good rounding just neat white on that edge over there wipe off the excess paint and blend it away because all that paint is now still wet and can you see i'm not going to try and paint his hair or head or anything like that because we've got all this other ornate detail work that's that's coming around it okay so now i'm just literally blocking in we've got all these random little things over here that we have no clue what they are so i'm just adding little shapes dabs and dashes and they will fill all that in for us make it look like there's detail there let's see this little rest for his ore goes down there so it's in shadow and then on the other side it curls up so it goes into highlight so I'll mix up a lighter version I'll pop that down over there and I'm going to take some neat burnt sienna and just pop it down in this area over here just to give that wood a bit more of a, a vibrant color Okay, so now it's back to black. But now this time water it down quite a bit because we need to do that little ornate detail work that's in front of the gentleman's head. So just add little suggestions of scrolls and things. It's obviously some beautiful, beautiful carving work that's happening over there. We can't see what it is, so we're not going to paint it in in all sorts of details or try and add details. You're welcome to, to do that if you really want to, but I don't think it's necessary. It's enough of us just a suggestion is enough just a little bit of a gray just to suggest some some folds here in this uh these seats just a few dabs and dashes that's all don't go overboard now what we can do is um, edge off this boat over there so I'm going to take some white lots of water and where can we put it down maybe over there Just a really light color. It doesn't particularly matter what color it is. The color I've got here has got a touch of Muncian in it, which I'm happy with because that's is sort of colors that's around us, eh? So we'll take that and we'll run it down here. So now we're just adding edging detail. Those metallic bits. And 
and it's this detail that sort of ties everything together and makes it look neat so take your time and get these little lines nice smooth and continuous this one over here try and get it nice and parallel to the previous one as best you can if you can't get your hand nice and steady and then rather just leave this this parallel line out Now I'm going to actually take some gold paint. If you don't have gold paint, just uh, take uh, cadmium yellow and just use neat cadmium yellow. A fine liner. And I'm going to suggest some of this ornate work, gold work that's on here. I can't see exactly what it is, so I'm not going to try and paint anything specific. Just little random curly shapes is good enough. seems to be something on this little tip over there like that alrighty so let's do the gondolier and then we should be done I'll move that to there so for the gondolier what we're going to do is just give his um, shirt a little bit of shading so just take any grey, any grey, but not too dark. Quite a, a lightish grey. Remember our sun is coming from the front to the back, right? Let's do that. So this whole back area here is actually in shadow. That's too dark. So I'm just adding extra water into that. So it's just a really rough little wash just to darken that up over there. That sleeve over there. And pretty much that whole sleeve over there is also in shadow. So that makes this here lighter and that there darker. And, that, and then it shows that it's round. Alrighty, let's take some Payne's Grey for his pants. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. Uh, 
let's go to there. So I'm going to give his pants just a basic blocking. Don't go right up to the edge of the boat. Remember, we've got that little uh, that little metal edging there. I'm going to give it a tiny gap, tiny gap, where the one leg meets the other leg. Just so that I don't lose where that edge is. Or where the two meet. Okay, so where those two meet, this leg over here, there's a bit of a gap between your legs. So this here catches a little bit of sunlight. Not much, just a little. There, so that makes that little furthest pant leg lighter than the one in front. And it's just that little bit of a contrast there that separates the two. Here, we can just keep that solid. Oops. Touch of water there again. That there, solid like that. Give that one a second coat just to really bring out that separation. Can you see that? Now you've got that little bit of a, a gap between the legs, telling you that they, they're not, he's not standing with his legs together. He's standing with them slightly apart. This, this side here is pointing towards the light, so I'm adding just a little bit of a highlight on that. And then I can see there's a little bit of a, a kink in the pants over there, a little kink in the pants over there. So I just suggest them without doing too much detail. So Marais is asking, which black did I use? I use I'm using Payne's Grey. Okay, that's that. And then it's a really deep blue on his shirt, those stripes. So we can take the blue and some ultramarine and whack them together. Lots of blue, just a little bit of ultramarine to darken it. Or you can use neat ultramarine, I suppose, if you wanted to. It looks like quite a dark blue. It's not a bright color. So that's why I'm adding a bit of Payne's Gray into it. Go back to the fine liner. Make sure there's enough water in it to create nice lines. You want that paint to just flow evenly off the brush so that you can do nice lines. Now, it's really important, it's super important that you follow the contour of the shirt to show the shape. For example, can you see over here, it goes there and then slightly up again. Here, they seem to flatten out a little bit, except on this right edge over there, they curl slightly up. Here, they're starting to curl a little bit down. And there they're distinctly curling down by shoulder. Here on this sleeve, they're curling this way. And on this sleeve, they're curling that way. So you have to follow those curves. Otherwise, the shape of his shirt is not going to look correct. So what I'll usually do is I'll, I can judge that one by the contour we've already got there. I can judge that one by the contour we've already got there. And then I'm going to judge something here in between, which is like flattish. And then I can judge the rest of the lines according to those. So this one is going to just gradually change 
to meet the shape of the line at the bottom. Like that. Oh, you don't have to, but just I've spotted it, so I'm going to add that little, that little kink in his shirt over there. <laughs> Unimportant details, eh? Alrighty, so let's add his face in. So I'll just use this skin tone that I did mix earlier. So that was just burnt sienna, white, touch yellow. Pull those together. Oh, we forgot his, uh, his collar. Add that in in a second. So I'm going to get the shape of his face as best I can. It may not be perfect, and I don't think it matters. It's, he's not looking at you anything. Is also not really the, the focal point as such. The gondola is. So if you can just get that shape more or less, you're okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of a darker brown and just suggest some of that shaved hair. Add some white into the skin tone, just to get a, a maybe a bit more yellow, just to get a lighter version. And let's just use a fine liner for that. I'll just add an odd little, odd little highlight here and there. But like I said, I'm not going to try and paint his face. It's not important. We don't have to paint his face. So if you aren't comfortable painting faces, you can uh, sigh a sigh of relief. <laughs> Really not important. Just little suggestions of details. There's just a suggestion of a, of an ear. Over there. That's it. That's all we need.
what you do just need to get right is just the silhouette the silhouette of the face so that's what i'm just working on here now is just getting that silhouette is a little bit more accurate that's good enough okay let's tackle that all over there so it's quite yellowish so let's take some yellow so white just a touch of burnt sienna into that so i'm sort of putting in the the highlight color so i'm putting in the ore first before his arm because his arm now and his hand wraps around the ore Okay, so we'll pop that into there. And we'll just take a smaller brush and a bit of, bit of a burnt sienna kind of color. And just run it down this side, just as a shadow. That'll make the ore appear round. And then just here, here it gets broader. So I'm going to just gradually add a bit of a whiter edge just over there. Just as, a, as an extra little highlight. On that bit over there okay let's go back to our skin tone and just pop his arm in over there so as before don't try and get detail just block it in that side whack there for his uh the other side of his fingers that are wrapping around and then get a bit of a highlight. Just highlight there. A little bit of that darker version we used on the face. And shadow there. And now let's get that collar in. And that should complete the painting. Okay, let's stand back and see where we're at. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so anything I'm missing is just... Uh, Three birds in the sky. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll call it a day on that one. So it's, it's got quite a bit of a, a watercolory kind of look from all the um, all the soft colors that we've used now. All right, so to lift this masking tape off, I use my hair dryer and I zap it with a hair dryer. And now while I'm blowing, it's softening up the, the glue. So I'm not pulling on the on the masking tape. I'm just gently adding a little bit of upward pressure. And then what it does is as that glue softens, it lifts up itself. It loosens itself without tearing your paper. If you're using the, the canvas paper.
Let's see. So I'll zoom out so you can see the the paper. And that, now you can see how nice that little that little white border around looks. So you frame it over here. Then that that looks pretty cool with that extra extra border. What a lot of people actually actually do is they actually draw with a with a marker a, a solid black line. It also edges it off quite nicely. Alrighty, so Maria, um, you can now instantly rewind the, the, the class now. The edited version, it usually takes me a day or two, day or two. So I am now going uh, camping, so I'm hoping to get this out to you uh, within the next, within the next 12 hours or so. At worst, in the next 18 hours. The, the replay will be available on the website. Right, so I just want to adjust the other camera quickly. Just bear with the, the shaking. Then we can go to there and still see the still see the picture. So if you've got any questions, last questions, fire away. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed uh, painting that. It was nice. Lots of lots of fine detail work, eh? But it's alright. It was just over three hours, and we've got ourselves a a lovely painting that can that can look good on the wall once it's framed. So I'll give it a give it a few seconds. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. So like I say, if you do want to uh, see the edited version of this class and uh, have access to 400 plus other art lessons, the link is below. You can. Uh, Become a patron there. It's uh, surprisingly affordable. So go and take a look. You may be pleasantly surprised. Thanks. I'm definitely going to enjoy my camping. I can't wait. <laughs> Emma Rose thinks she wants a pasta and a glass of wine. Yes, a nice glass of red wine. Eh? It would go down great. Alrighty, so I'm not seeing any new questions coming in, so I think let's let's call it a day. Alrighty, so there we go. I hope you enjoyed painting that class, this uh, painting with me. I had awesome fun in the class. I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Okay, guys, so thanks for joining me in the live class. I really do appreciate it. We'll catch you next time.